the fruits of their of their hard labor down in Florida hopefully will pay off here in the season about to commence. Uh, was there any particular lesson that you tried to emphasize uh, with the team down in Florida? No, well, in Florida it's all about skill development, trying to make each guy better and improve their weaknesses so that they can hopefully prepare, use this venue to get with a full season team next year. <clears throat> now that we've and we had 115 players there, all kind of working together. We didn't get our own Brooklyn team together until just last Saturday. So what I'm trying to do now, in a few short days, is blend them into a team. You know, now from 115, now we we picked out 30, <clears throat> and so the goal now is for them to start gelling as a unit, get to know their teammates, build confidence with each other, and. Uh, I'll do what I can to kind of bring them together as a unit. And, uh, you know, usually that takes about 10 or 12 ball games, you know. So a couple weeks from now, we should have a, as I told the guys in a meeting today, we may have some different lineups. Everybody's going to get a chance to play. The pitchers won't really have defined roles specifically, but their performance in the first 10 to 15 games will make it very easy for me to see what our pretty much everyday lineup should be and what roles the pitchers will have in the bullpen. <clears throat> what would you say the biggest lesson you've learned from last year's experience with being a manager here at Brooklyn? Oh gosh, after 42 years of this, I don't know, are there any more lessons to, to be learned? I mean, you know, I had a good time last year, you know, so I mean, at this stage, you know, after retiring and coming back, uh, this is actually just fun time for me now because I've you know, I accomplished what I wanted to in baseball, and now it's just, it's all about the kids, and uh, Dave LaRoche is, is my age, and he was retired as well. We, we both talk about how much fun it is to, to give something back to the game, you know, to just impart some of what we've learned over the way to these kids, and then just have fun watching them play, you know. So, I mean, I'm always open to learning new things, um, and certainly this park was a, a great personal experience for me. Other than the big leagues, this was the be this is the best facility that I ever managed in, and I, and I managed in most of the leagues and at every level from rookie league, low A, high A, double A, triple A. I, I was never fortunate enough, and I tell these kids all the time not to take this for granted because it wasn't like this at all in my era. <clears throat> and so the park, the city of Brooklyn, and the fan support here is something. That you don't generally see in any level of minor league baseball. So, um, you know, for that, you know, I'm I'm glad to uh, spend my you know, last years in the game in a great environment. Is it tough to get all these guys to buy in together as a team when they kind of know we're competing against each other for a spot at the next level? No, well, that and that and uh, it can be. I've never found it to, to be difficult because. Um, you know, if I have a gift, when I look back over my career, I've never one that ever, uh, I've never in my life ever seen um, race or ethnicity. I mean, I'm, I just see baseball players, and and players perceive that right away. And my ability to speak Spanish and everything I talk and work on is about team, team, team. So. Um, I mean, I, I, I've never seen that to be an issue. It, it, it does take some time, especially, like I said, since this team was just formed last Saturday. Because the Mets have three rookie teams, and so all 100 players played together in Florida. And then last Saturday, they were split up to Brooklyn, Kingsport, and Gulf Coast League. So we're not even talking a full week since they knew that they were going to be together as a unit. <clears throat> but like I say, within, within a week to 10 days, I fully see us, you know, really gelling together as a unit, you know, and I'll, I'll do what I can to make that happen. Uh, is there anything in particular you'll be looking at uh, with regards to when Tyler takes the mound this weekend? No, well, we, we picked Tyler uh, to, to start the opener because he's got, he's got advanced control, especially for this level. And he showed us down in Florida that he has a lot of poise. You know, so we're just open, you know, opening day is always something, you know, whether it's little league or high school, minor leagues or big leagues, there's something about the newness of a new season and a new league where, you know, 
the, these guys are all going to be, I mean, they wouldn't be human if they didn't have some butterflies in their stomach and some nerves going on tomorrow. But you hope that by the time the first pitch is thrown that everybody settles in and just focuses on the task at hand and tries to block out, you know, the crowd and the roller coasters and all the all the stuff that really doesn't uh, pertain to baseball. But for some guys, that's more difficult than it is for others. And uh, lastly, is there any particular routine that you like have a habit of going through uh, with the team, like before each and every game? No, just before the the first one. In fact, you know, I probably shouldn't say this, but I will with my sense of humor. <laughs> there, there's certain guys that the the outside elements don't allow them to perform, perform to their potential. So I've always made a joke out of it before the season starts. I've always referred to it as the sphincter factor. And, I, and, and, the, and the players laugh, which is what I want them to do. I said, as soon as you overcome that factor, to just focus, if you're a pitcher, on the, the hitter that's at the plate and throw to your catcher, the sooner your skills will be able to surface. But some of the guys... Um, you know what, and, and it, this, you see this all the time in winter ball, and you see it with a youngster that goes up to the big leagues for the first time. Uh, from what I read in the paper, it just happened to Akeel Morris last night. This guy has tremendous ability, and he gave up five five earned runs, I guess, in two thirds of an inning last night. That that part of that is what I call the sphincter factor, where the nerves and the awareness of a big league stadium and the crowd didn't allow him to settle down and focus on the task at hand that he's done brilliantly at, at St. Lucie all the time. And so I, I make a joke out of it to try to get guys to relax because as soon as you get them through that, then you can see their real skills come out and then they then they have fun and then they go ahead and compete. In terms of the hierarchy of this organization, this team draws far better than any other level. Mm -hmm. You know, like basically these kids basically going from that to here and then basically they're going to across like this anywhere else on their way up. <laughs> well, they will at AAA, but you're right, and, and we addressed that today. I told the guys, I said, you're, you know, because I, I, I never want players to take things for granted, because in my era, it wasn't at all like this. You didn't, you didn't see parts like this in AAA. When I was in AAA, Buffalo was the first original stadium that was like this, except that it held 20,000. But the rest of them were just archaic, you know, and I told the players in a meeting today, I said, you, you never want to take this for granted. You're, the, the, uh, the, the Wilpon family that owns the Mets owns this club and our proximity to City Field. We're like 10, 12 miles away, so people from the front office are going to get to come watch you play, more so than on any other minor league team. We're going to draw almost 7,000 people a night. You won't see that when you get promoted to Savannah or St. Lucie or Binghamton. In Vegas, you will. Um, and Vegas was our Triple A team when I was with the Padres, and and on on certain nights they 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 draw very good out there. I've seen ten thousand people in the park, but you're right. By and large, this is it for them, and it's a great experience that they shouldn't take for granted. If you can't get fired up to play in this park, with the weather and the the the, the conditions of the field and brand new balls and BP, it's a major league environment and the fan base to support it. So I just wanted to remind them, enjoy it, don't take it for granted, and have fun, because you paid the price in Florida for three months. Now the next three months is going to be fun, because it's night baseball, the games count, and now you're on a real team, not just part of a hundred working out every day. So, you know, we're, we're, we're excited and looking forward to it. You got nine returners this year. Um, how much are you looking for them to share their experiences with some of the newer guys? Yeah, well, that's and that's a good that's a good point. Um, we mentioned that in Florida, I told the the veterans to to even on the flight here to start imparting to the new guys, tell them where the subway was. A lot. Yeah, you know, we have vans that bring the players to the park, but a lot of the guys like to come early and go to some of the restaurants here around Coney Island. Particularly the Latin players like Latin food, and I understand that they they can get some Latin food down here, and uh, you know, so just 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 showing them where the subway was, how to get here, and, and just getting acclimated. And certainly, the nine veterans that were here last year, they already know what they're in for, so there won't be any stage fright on their part. And uh, you know, hopefully, they'll show some leadership to the other guys to help them uh, get acclimated and and. Uh, you know, some of those guys very well may not be with us all season, you know, because uh, 
the Savannah Club is playing real good, but the Mets traditionally at the halfway point, they make some promotions. And as people are moved up from Savannah to St. Lucie, it's, it's very possible, uh, uh, certainly beyond um, me, but the people above me make decisions on, on when maybe some of these guys might get a chance to go to Savannah. And whenever that happens, um, I'm always glad because sometimes the press says, well, gosh, does that take away from your team when you lose a star? And I always look at it from the positive side of saying it's about player development. So I'm happy when a guy goes up and it also gives somebody else a chance to pitch or to play every day and show what they can do. So it's, it's all good. I know it's hard right now, but of the newer players, do you think any one of them will have the potential to maybe make it up to the Mets eventually, of the 2015 <coughs> draftees that may potentially have a chance to play here? Well, there's only three that are with us so far out of the draft, and Dave LaRoche uh, it handles the pitchers, so I haven't seen the two pitchers throw yet, uh, but but Corey, uh, Corey Taylor from uh, uh, Texas Christian University uh, is, a, is a real strong uh, physical kid uh, that's a relief pitcher. <clears throat> and then P.J. Conlon is a left-handed pitcher we got from the University of San Diego. And both of those guys, the Mets have a 10-day throwing program on the side before they're even eligible to pitch in a game. So we won't, we won't see Corey at the earliest till Tuesday and P.J. a week from tomorrow. Um, to serve those 10 days. But the second baseman, uh, Vinny Siena from the University of Connecticut, he's been working out just that this is his, be his third workout today. He's looked very, very good in the two days of workouts. And uh, I'm very impressed with him. And, and we will see him open up at second base tomorrow night. <clears throat> This season, um, who was our first interview? Um, Tyler um, Badamo? Yes. Um, he, one of his goals he made as a, um, a statement right away that I'm here to do well, to improve, and also make sure that this team gets back to the championship. What's well, your impressions good. of that? Well, that's good. That's <clears throat> and that's just as it should be. I mean, you know, we talked in a clubhouse meeting today that. I mean, each one of these guys individually, they know and have been told in Florida over the last 90 days what they need to do to get better. So they're all on individual programs, but now that they're on a team, while they're with this team, I believe that a team is like an extended family. They're going to they're gonna spend more time together in the next 90 days than they are with their own families or wives or girlfriends, even if they're in town with the number of hours we're going to be spending at the park. So consequently, the sooner that they buy into each other and really develop a familial type attitude and chemistry that, um, you know, while we're here as a team, the philosophy should be, hey, somebody's going to win and it might as well be us. So uh, we're going to, we're looking forward to playing the Staten Island Yankees this weekend as we did uh, last year. And uh, if I remember right last year, they got us early and we got them late. And uh, so I'm sure, I'm sure it'll be a it's, a, it's a very friendly, but a very competitive rivalry. And uh, hopefully we'll bring out the best in both teams and, and all the players. Any thoughts on the passing of Nelson Double No, you know, um, I've only been with the Mets two years, but as a, as a lifer in baseball, I certainly am aware of the Double Day family. And, you know, I mean, uh, in mine and our, our, everybody with the Brooklyn Cyclones, our thoughts and prayers go out to the rest of the family because what a what a legacy and what a tradition to be associated uh, with the great game of major, major league baseball and their their family has been a huge part of it so yeah that was uh, that was uh, sad but but you know it, it, it's kind of ironic that the season is starting tomorrow because you know for us optimists every time that there's a death there is in a sense a rebirth and tomorrow for all the fans of uh, you know Brooklyn that you know it's a rebirth a, another new season and uh, um, you know, it's go from there. But yeah, our, our, our thoughts and prayers are with the Double Day family today.